Hello and welcome to my tutorial on tuck pointing. This video was created for the do-it-yourselfer who needs to repair some missing or deteriorating concrete between exterior brick or block surfaces. The tutorial includes a list of necessary tools and materials for successfully completing this project and step-by-step -step videos of key phases of the process. Some experience with other handyman tools and activities like working with wood saws or cutting boards is beneficial, but not necessary. With a bit of practice and careful attention to detail, this project can be su successfully completed. Keep in mind though, it does involve a fair amount of bending, twisting, and turning in order to reach the different areas to be repaired. And always remember, safety first. Use protective gear. you've got all your materials and equipment ready, uh, it's time to begin the grinding portion. Um, basically, you've got some voids here where the cement's been pushed back, and as you can see, it's just kind of crumbling out. Um, so that definitely needs replaced. What we're going to do is we're going to cut out these joints, and we're going to replace them. This part here actually, as you can see, is kind of pulled out a little bit. Um, so that's going to be a block replacement, which we'll cover in another tutorial. Uh, so here we go. Now as you can see, uh, this part here, the protective uh, covering, is really good for protecting your siding and stuff while you're cutting joints and it gets close to them areas. Once the grinding is complete, uh, you want to remove all the additional debris and dust from the joints. You can either use a garden hose for larger areas and just spray it all down real good. Or in this case, especially with the dirt so we don't make a big mud mess, we can just take a brush and just brush in between each and every joint to remove the additional debris. All right, once you have your area cleaned off and, and got the dust removed and you're ready to start tuck pointing, um, it's best to begin by putting your concrete into a bucket 
um, or into a wheelbarrow depending on how much you're going to mix. Uh, in this case it's just a little area so we could just put some in here about what we think we might need. And then I recommend using a bucket, another bucket, and put some water in there and this will allow you to measure how much water you're actually putting in your cement so you don't get it too wet. Um, Once you have your water ready, go ahead and pour some in there. Um, for a whole bag of cement, it's about a half a bucket of water. Uh, and you can always add water and stir some more, but you can't take the water back out. If you do end up with too wet of cement, you can always add a little more cement to it to thicken it up, but it's best to avoid that in the first place. All right, now that your cement's mixed, it should be, as you can see, it's, it's got some substance to it, so it's still pliable, but soft enough that you can work with. <clears throat> so we're ready to point. The first time you use your mud board, you can either take a hose and just lightly spray it, get it wet. This will help the mortar stick to it. or since we're in a dirt area anyway, we don't want to get mud everywhere. Just put some on there, spread it around. And just push it back into the bucket. Go ahead and just put a scoop on there. Spread around, as you can see. It's still sturdy enough. It's not too wet, it sticks on there real nice. Take your tuck point tool. These also come with a little handle on the bottom. Depending on what you're doing, you can just take that off if you're working on a low area. Or it's good for wider areas where you have more room. You want to take it and just kind of push in on your first one. You want to make sure that you pack the joint completely full of mortar. Once you've got your joint started, you just push in and pull back. This causes a mud in the mud, and that'll make it just stick in there real nice. Main thing is you want to make sure that each joint gets completely full. Because we're going to come back and tool it later. Once you've got your bed joint done, you're ready to do what they call the headers, which is the up and down joints. You can, just like uh, getting a piece of butter off for your toast, just pull it off of there, and sometimes they'll slide off on you. And just put it in the joint, twist it into the brick, and it'll start to fill the space. things in your way like the ground and the siding it can be a little tricky so just take your time another option is you could take your margin trowel and do the same thing just like you were getting a little bit of butter for your toast kind of angle it in there Make sure you get the joints full. And 
that's it. Once you've got it tuck pointed, you'll wait about, depends on if it's a really hot day or a cold day. The weather plays a big part in this. But we want it to where we, when we push on it, it's kind of stiff. Right now it's really wet because we just barely uh, tuck pointed it. I'd say about 20 minutes to an hour depending um, on the weather and how, how wet you mixed it when you first got started. So we'll be back. So once the concrete's dry enough, uh, as you'll notice, it's just kind of, it's nice and, and ply, it just comes right off. It's not smeary, it's not wet anymore, it's got to the dryer. Uh, you can take your tuck point tool and just kind of scrape off the excess. You want to kind of do it in an angle, um, that way you're not pulling it out of your joints. And you'll take your baller and you'll take the round end and push it in there. Gives it a kind of a scratchy appearance um, and a water runoff slope to make the water run off the brick and not sit in there. Usually you want to start on one side and just kind of work into the other. You want to make sure that you get it all, otherwise you'll leave what they call a shiner. It kind of stands out. During this process too, it's best if you start with the up and down joints, the headers first. That way your bed joints look more seamless going across. And that's it. Just let it dry, and then uh, we'll come back and brush it. All right, the final step in uh, restoring uh, some brick and block is uh, just to take your brush once it's dried. You can see now that. It's not smearing or anything, it's, it's pretty well ready. And you just brush it. And now remove all the extra mortar that's on there and uh, give it a real nice professional look. Uh, once you're done brushing, just take your uh, tuck pointing tool or your margin trowel and just scrape all the droppings away. You want to wait till the end to do this part because otherwise it, when it's all wet it'll just smear and make a big mess. But now it's nice and crumbly so you can clean it up pretty easily. Just scrape it away, put it in your bucket, and uh, put it in your garbage. You're all done. Thanks for watching.